So I'm going to work with Julia in rolling over. Um, and, you know, I've done Michelle's rolling over course. The exercises are awesome. Uh, it was hard for me to, um, you know, doing her courses, it's always hard for me to, like, remember how to recreate uh, the rolling over or actually, like, feel the rolling over in the system from those exercises. The exercises are awesome. I, you know, I, I, I've done them with my kids and have seen my kids roll over. Some of them have rolled over. In her case, she's just got the experience of it. Um, and with time, she was able to roll over. Uh, but, you know, I just was trying to find a way to more simply work with rolling over and just, like, do one or two things and, like, know that I was affecting rolling over and, like, filling it in the system. And when I finally figured out the movement structure, it, like, is a game changer in figuring out development. So, um, and figuring out how to, like, have the Michelle touch, you know, have Michelle experiences at home where... If you go in and have an intensive with her, I mean, she works on a kid's body and she starts taking them through development. She can feel the different parts and pieces of development, that movement structure. And I just I was never able to do that until now. Um, and so, you know, I've been working with um, quite a few parents and they've been having a lot of success um, with, uh, with learning and, and working with the movement structure. And as a result, having uh, more success with uh, Michelle's courses and things like that and so uh, we're going to get into rolling over a little bit and the big thing with rolling over is you're working on the horizon cross planes when uh, you're working on rolling over so here I've got um, I've got my little demos to help demonstrate uh, the cross planes and then also here is just be careful Julia here is just my uh, chart that I made of Michelle's uh, uh, of Michelle's technique, the, the core movements that she talks about, correlating the movement structure with the vision, and then all the parts and pieces of development. You can get this chart in the Complete Optimal Development Program um, and start learning how to work with your child's movement structure. So here, okay, hold on just a second, okay? In just a second, you can roll over, okay? So if you want to work with your child in rolling over and just, you know, learn what's like the most effective thing you can do to support your child drilling over it's to work with um, these cross planes so I need you on your back and then you'll go to your belly okay uh, specifically the horizon cross planes when your child's going into that milestone this is the the part of the movement structure that is being stimulated and enhanced so the the cross planes make an X through the chest and through the back okay and so when you're working with a movement plane, one of the big things is really just initiating the rotation in the system. Hey, can you lay on your back for a minute, please? I need you on your back for a minute. Um, is working with the rotation in the system. So here, um, and working on a cross plane. So here, as I'm working with her, this is just to help you visualize the cross plane through her system. So, so it's up here at the chest, and then we're coming around and going through uh, the the bottom part of the back. So when I'm working on this cross plane, I'm I'm going to be rotating her body like this, and I'm imagining her body moving along this uh, movement plane. And um, you can learn more about the more basic movement planes in the What Is Movement Lesson course. But here, working with rolling over. Um, kind of need to be a little bit sensitive with the chest especially if they're like respiratorily compromised so i'm going to come here in this side and visualize this movement plane here along her chest and so i'm just gonna uh, keep my touch along that plane and and i'm focusing on feeling movement along that plane so now as i come and work with her um i'm just trying to initiate movement along that plane and, and one of the first steps of the movement process is rotation, gentle touch and rotation. Uh, Michelle quite quickly in her exercises goes right into weight transfer and, and works on the transitional skills and things like that. But sometimes like you just need to figure out the first part of like what is rotation and how do you even initiate the movement. And when we're initiating the movement, we're wanting to initiate the movement along this rotational plane and so you know I've got it here as a circle you're working here on a rotational plane and so now as I'm working on her 
I'm just working on that plane. I'm, I'm rotating forward, rotating back, but I can really touch anywhere along this plane and just stimulate her whole body. Um, sometimes you just need to be careful on the chest, but if you're going to come work along the chest, I'm just coming really lightly across the chest and working on that movement plane. And I'm coming in with intent. I have the intent to work on rolling over. I'm specifically wanting to uh, work on this movement plane. And I'm feeling for that in her body. Because when you have this, okay, when you have this movement plane, when the child goes into that movement plane, they flip over onto their belly. So this is her on her back. And 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 when that movement plane is, is being played with, that's what allows the, the child to go onto their belly. Um, and then when you have the cross plane, Okay, so this is the, this is the other cross plane. This is what allows the child to come and go back on their back. Okay, so there's two planes here to to work with, and you can work with either plane. So that's the first plane here. So going along the chest and coming back along the back. So no matter how she's moving, if I want to focus on that movement plane, I can just work on her. No matter how she's moving, and just keep my intent and focus there. Even if she flips over, so she's been wanting to roll over, so she can roll over. Um, a lot of times I'm on the floor with her. Um, I have a bad hip right now, and so that's a little bit difficult. So I'm actually standing up at a table. And here, no matter how she's moving, uh, I can just work on that plane. And I'm imagining it coming here along the front of her chest, so I can still work on that plane. And something that you can do is you can actually like grab a plate, okay? And take your plate and come here and make it crisscross along your child's body. Work on that rotation and then come in and actually touch your child's body and work on that rotation. So that's what this is here for is just to help you. Uh, th what, that's what these are here for is just to help you visualize that plane like through something. Um, but now if I want to work on, so I'm working on the, the forward cross plane. Now I want to work on the back cross plane which is just the other crisscross. So I can come here along the front of her ribs and just work on that rotational plane. What's up, baby? Where's it hurting? She's actually really tired. Um, but that's all right. So here I'm just focused on that plane and on... The rotation of that plane. Now for your child, if you're working on them and it's just feeling awkward and you're like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Usually that's an indicator that it's not you, it's your child and they don't have that movement plane. Which is why you're even here in the first place. So here she is playing with that. And you can even see here as she's bringing up her head, she's, she's really exaggerating that movement plane. You can see the back here moving and it's going along the front of her ribs and she in her compromised state has to really utilize these movement planes a lot more dramatically to um to get her movement and so um this is where i'm just focused on working with her and i'm just trying to create this rotation here um and this is where it's really useful if you've watched some of Michelle's videos and gone through her courses because then you, you're just learning about the movement lesson touch. You've practiced it a little bit. And so this is really just to give you more context to what she's doing. Are you trying to sit up? Okay, well, why don't you come this way? Sit you up, okay? So even where she comes here and sitting, I can still focus here and work on either movement plane. So if I want to work on this forward one, I'm just imagining that plane going through her chest and here back from her ribs. And so I'm just focused on that plane. And this is where, you know, it always amazed me when Michelle was like, yeah, I can feel, you know, I can feel the milestone in the body. I can feel that. And I'm just like, I, I can feel movement, but I don't necessarily like feel the milestone. And so something as you're working on this movement plane, like you'll actually feel the rolling over in the system or the lack uh, thereof. But as you keep working with that rotation, uh, like 
you start to feel the milestone. It's the coolest thing ever. Um, and so then if I want to switch planes, I can come here from her back and, and come here and work along the front of her ribs. Now this one's a little bit harder for her. She doesn't, she can't sway the this part of the body over. Um, and so this is where I can just come in and manually offer that, that milestone to her and that movement, and then she'll do with it what she will. In some kids' cases, like that, they just have a little movement glitch and that's all they need and they roll over and they just keep going along their merry way. But for a child that's just not uh, doing the, the milestones on their own, uh, you know, you have to manually offer and stimulate those movements. So here I am just with her, uh, with her plane. I got to make sure I got the right one here. Let me get it backwards. Um, but I'm just coming in and I'm imagining that plane and I'm just going through her back all the way to her chest. That might be the other one. Sometimes it gets confusing here. Oh, it's this one. There we go. My husband's like, use the other one. But I was just giving you the direction of the plane. So there we go. That's a little bit more accurate. So I'm just working with her like this. And I'm really focused on, um, I'm really focused on the movement. Oh, it's taped. That's why. The movement going around the center. Okay. So as I'm working with that movement plane, I'm really focused on creating movement around a center point. Um, and so that's why the rotation is very specific and very important. Uh, you know, you're not just moving your child back and forth. You're, you're, um, you're, you're creating a very specific movement in their body. So now working with her and just coming in here through the back. This one just feels awkward and is a little bit harder for her. And so that's where I have to go more soft and gentle and just be really subtle with that rotation to get it to initiate. And as and as the movement becomes more available in your child's system, um, you just, for lack of a better word, like you just feel them loosen up or just unlock and they just start moving and responding to that plane that you're working on. Um, and so sometimes you can sit here for just a few minutes and your child can respond. That usually happens with uh, my more typical children. With her, when I find a movement plane that's really struggling, uh, I tend to need to work on it a little bit longer. Because um, especially here, I can get the rotation coming this way, but I'm not getting the rotation coming back this way. And so that's where I come over and focus on that rotation a little bit more. Um... And, and for me, I know that I'm working on rolling over and I'm putting that milestone into her system because I'm working on those movement planes. Now, these movement planes are just the foundations of, of all the independent skills that we're able to develop. But it starts with this simple milestone. And so when you do movement lesson, like we're thinking so far beyond like the accomplishment of the milestone, like we want to put independence into your child's system and so the, the the rolling over milestone that movement is just a foundational skill and when it's done the right way it really sets your child up for a future of progression and independence and that that's what we want to offer here so uh, you may need to rewatch the video a couple times go go and look at those planes if you really want to go into more depth with that you can get into the complete optimal development program where you know, you're learning the breakdown of this chart of the movement structure, the core movements that Michelle talks about, and then you learn how to go through her courses from A to Z, starting at the beginning of development and just building upon the foundations of your child's movements. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and uh, we'll go from there. I hope you enjoyed the video and work with your child's rolling over. Thanks.